Um, what attracted you to the park festival and how did you get involved? Uh, Michael Winterbottom asked me to do it after I contacted, no that's not true actually, I contacted Michael when I heard that he was making this film and didn't have a lead actor and I rang him up and said uh, I'll do it if you like and he said uh, okay. And why I was, why I was attracted to it because I thought it was interesting to look at the the super rich people who we all read about all the time. We don't ever sort of probe or look at how they acquired their wealth. And um, what I love about the film is that it does look about uh, look at how people acquire their wealth and makes the direct link between the slave wages paid to people in the developing world in garment factories and the huge amounts of wealth and uh, and. Uh, that are acquired by people on the backs of those people. Yeah, it's probably a bit of a leading question, but did you base the performance on anyone in particular? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we, people, this, yes, it's, it's true that um, it was inspired by uh, um, Philip Green, uh, Sir Philip Green, uh, which he, the, the title which he unbelievably still retains. But anyway, uh, he, uh, yeah, he, he was sort of the inspiration for it. But really, it's not about him specifically. It's about a whole swathe of people uh, who behave in this sort of pernicious way uh, and, and they're no, very rarely held accountable by anyone in the public discourse. Uh, it's just like an accepted way of the world and, and uh, the film's trying to say is that uh, people should talk about it and question it. And really, Philip Green is just uh, someone who uh, we should really owe a debt of thanks to because he uh, basically does so his uh, overtly crude behavior in the past, uh, unapologetic behavior, helped sort of bring it to light. And uh, actually the more the more um, nefarious uh, practitioners of, of that behaviour are, um, are are actually uh, covert in, in their the, uh, their profile. They try to try to, to operate sort of below the radar. You know, the the uh, the owner of Zara is worth seventy billion, and the people who make the clothes in his factories are paid four dollars a day, and uh, that's something we want to shine a light on. I gather the teeth were your idea, is that true? The teeth, uh, yeah, well, the, the movie has to have metaphorical teeth, so I decided it would be appropriate for me to have uh, literal teeth uh, that were uh, white and shiny. Yeah, I mean, that's based on, uh, the, I mean, the, the, like I said, the character's based on Philip Green, but the look is based on uh, a guy called Richard Caring, who has uh, unbelievably and possibly white teeth, and uh, which I think look funny. And so I thought um, it would be a good look yeah, for the, for the film. But those are not my teeth, they're sort of clips on my teeth. Impossible to get my teeth that white. Yeah. Um, Humour plays a vital role in the performance because obviously it makes you know, it sort of a little more sympathetic. How difficult was it to, how did you approach striking that balance? Uh, well, you had to make it funny because it's about a serious uh, topic and uh, if it's just a big sort of sanctimonious lecture then it just becomes boring and uh, so humour was pretty important. It was inherent in the script, you know, but of course I, I added bits myself. I sort of embellished stuff and made it, made it funnier and thought of, thought of uh, uh, ways to improve it. And, uh, uh, but it's very important that, that people laugh because while they're laughing, then, then you can sort of slip the message in under the door and make them think about stuff at the same time. People were definitely laughing at the uh, previous screenings um, and at the LFF screening. Um, there was, Michael says there's quite a lot of improvisation in the film and you just alluded to it yourself. Um, was there a particular piece of improvisation that you were um, most proud of? Uh, well, there's some improvisation around the, the... He throws a big celebrity party where there's lots of celebrity look-alikes. Uh, you know, there's George Michael, Rod, Rod Stewart, uh, uh, Kylie Minogue, etc., etc. Um, I think there's a, an Adele. Uh, but um, w the, w that entire scene was almost entirely improvised, and I think it's a pretty funny scene. Yeah, it's a very funny scene. Um, did you get younger you approval with Jamie Blackley's casting? Oh, uh, no, I'm not sure I did, but you know, I hung out with him in Sri Lanka. We we shared a tuk tuk together, so I managed to, to tour the tour the area with my younger self. I know, I think he does. A, I, I'm flattered though, because he's, he's a good-looking lad, and uh, you know, so I don't mind. I don't mind him playing me as a, a younger version of me. Um, I thought Shirley Henderson was terrific. Was it odd having her play your mum, given that she'd previously played your wife in 24 Hour Party uh, It was a little bit, yeah. Uh, but um, uh, Shirley Henderson is a wonderful actor. I love working with her. She feels like a kind of sister to me. Um, as someone who is, uh, uh, it, it's always a good place to be with her. So whether she's playing my mother or my wife, she does them both, both, all brilliantly and totally commits herself to the, to the role. So yeah, she's, she's wonderful. Did you joke about it on set together? Uh, yeah, we did. I thought we, I did. I remember I went up to him, put my arm around, and said, "Hey, you once you were my wife, and now you're my now you're my mother. How does that feel?" You know, we just we laughed about it. <laughs> um, was there anything cut out that you were particularly sorry to lose? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I think during the end credits, we uh, point the finger at specific people and individuals and companies and named them. Uh, so, so no, nothing that was new information. It was all publicly available information. There were no, no revelations there, but uh, we were sort of told to uh, rein it in a bit. And uh, I would like to have seen that, but I still think the film's great without it. Yeah. Um, what do you hope audiences take away from the film? Um, I don't, maybe they, they start just to, that I hope they're entertained. That's, that's the primary thing. And then I hope they maybe think about uh, stuff they ordinarily wouldn't think about, which is where, where the clothes come from, where, where cheap clothes come from, and uh, uh, what's behind a bargain, a high street bargain. They, they, they really, and also maybe change their behavior, their, their purchasing behavior. I start to talk about it at least. The same we talk about the environment, we talk about feminism, we talk about gender identity. I want people to start talking about or where things come from that they buy and uh, who pays the price for cheap goods.